Hi, in my previous video, I shown how to make IP address plan with IPv6. In this video, I'm going to explain how to configure IPv6 and how to enable it on a Mikrotik uh, NAS, uh, how to work with IPv6 and how to assign IPs uh, to your customers inside Splinks, how to set up blocking, and in general, how to deploy and work with IPv6 inside your network. So I deployed several IPv6 uh, networks and uh, sometimes it went well, sometimes not. All depends on the customer equipment and uh, support of IPv6. So I will be working with Mikrotik as a network access server and also as a CPE device. And I think Mikrotik is a very nice platform to show and to understand and also to learn how new technology works and how IPv6 uh, can be deployed. So first of all, uh, we will configure IPv6 on Mikrotik NAS and we'll talk about PPPoE authentication and then uh, with DHCP authentication. Uh, very interesting is that DHCP actually is used in both cases. So when we have native DHCP state for authentication, we have a DHCP v6 server configured. And when we use PPPoE, there is a hidden DHCP uh, server inside it. So in both situations, in both cases, we'll have to enable DHCP v6 client on a CPE device. And when I'm talking about DHCP v6, it means it's a stateful um, connection. So it's a connection that we can uh, track, that we can manage. And while when we will configure CPE device, we will use stateless IPv6 uh, assignments. So, but that's, let's talk about this later during this video. So, and we will start with configuring IPv6 and enabling it on Mikrotik NAS. What I recommend you to read is to read our articles about IPv6 deployment in general, how to enable it on BGP router, how to route it, how to work with the IP address plan. So if you go to Google and type there, uh, Splinks IPv6. So I'm pretty sure that it will show you this uh, IPv6 support article. And in this article, there is a description in general how to work with IPv6 and then how to configure IPv6 with the, uh, with Mikrotik. And also if you have some CP and home routers, also how to configure it there and how it works, how IP addresses are assigned, what means stateless uh, auto configuration. So, but now let's take a look on the config of the router. So now we have one router that acts as a, a PPPoE router there. In Splinks, I have it there. So I have added this router, you see, so it looks exactly like when we work with IPv4 network. And this is my customer. Let's close this. And this is my router configuration. So if we go to PPPoE, so let's close all the windows. And let's make step by step. There is almost no difference for a customer or for a router if we use IPv4 or IPv6. It's just a routing protocol. Uh, so if we go there and uh, under IPv6, first of all, we need to, uh, of course, install our package. So this is the first important thing is that we need to enable this. So this is disabled by default. Let's enable IPv6. When you enable it, then you have IPv6 there enabled. Now uh, let's go to our PPP if we need to enable something or not. So our default configuration this is this one. So for blocking, I use two ways of blocking. The first is that I just assign IPv6 uh, uh, address using uh, delegated prefix. But the second one is that I define the pool. So this is the pool where I say IPv6 block and I will use DHCP v6 uh, block uh, prefix, prefix delegation pool. And this IP customers from this uh, pool uh, from blocked will be re receiving these IPs. So if IPv6 pool, you can see that there I have a one network that I put there. You can use any network, you can use some uh, pseudo private network on IPv6 that customers that will never be routed and you redirect the clients to special pages using this range. Okay, so this, my, this is my first setup. As you see, there is no difference there on my PPPoE uh, configuration server. 
what I have more there is that I have under IPv6, there is, uh, there are some settings. So I have IPv6 uh, enabled on forwarding and this server, this is dynamically, this is what I mentioned. If I use IA PPPoE, there is a dynamic IP DHCP v6 server that is enabling inside this PPPoE uh, device. So let's say this PPPoE session. Okay, and then I see some bindings. So this is the dynamic binding for PPPoE. And then because I have also DHCP on another protocol uh, enabled, so that's why I have configuration there. But actually we have nothing more to, to enable. We have IPv6 addresses. Some of them are locally configured there because I want to simulate my IPv6 traffic because on this lab, I do not have real connection. So I have some loopback IPs, but actually uh, link local IPs are used inside PPPoE session and I don't need to configure anything else here on my uh, router. Okay, so then when this is done, I need to work with uh, this prefix in Splinks. I need to assign the prefix to Splinks and we work with slash 64s. Slash, slash 64 is always a network that is assigned to a customer. If I go to some client, for example, this one, and I click his configuration. So I see that this guy has IPv4 address, that he has some network that is routed. But the most important for me is this selection of IPv6 pool or IPv6 delegated network. This is the network that will be given to customer PPPoE session. It will be assigned inside session. And what I need to do on customer side is just to receive it and then forward it to all my equipment inside the network. So this is what I need to do as a CP router. When how to delegate it, very easy. So I have a pools. So I have two pools here and I can click on it and then it shows me all available so there's 64 networks that I can give to the customer. And then when I assign this IP pool, IPv6 pool to my client, what I can do, I can check them in my networking IPv6 networks. So what I did, I have added my slash 32, I have added slash 48. So this is for my first PPPO router. This is for my second PPPO router. And then when I click there, it shows me that these customers are currently online and they use this delegated networks inside their uh, PPPoE session. So that was my second step. And the third step is to configure CPE device. This is my CPE device here. So that's my router and the CPE device is this one. On the CPE device, we still have PPPoE session like for, for our IPv4, we don't have to enable anything there. But what we need to do, as I mentioned, also we need to install the package IPv6. And then the second thing that I need to do is I need to enable IPv6 DHCP client. So this is a bit tricky, it looks strange, but as I said, there is a DHCP client or DHCP server inside PPPoE session. So what I did is that I do enable here under interface PPPoE out, and I'm ex uh, ex expecting to receive the prefix how do I call the pool? And this is, I will explain now. So I need to call the pool somehow. So this is pool test, for example, and the prefix that I'm going to receive is slash 64. So I can add default route, uh, use pure DNS. This, are my, this is my basic configuration of my PPPoE. Um, let's say what of my receiving of IPv6 prefix inside PPPoE. So when I click this, what is my next step? I need to allocate, I need somehow to give IP addresses to my end users, to my end machines, to my laptop, iPhones, everything, you know, to my devices, printers, whatever. And to achieve this, I need to get the IP address on my interface and I need to somehow receive this IP address. So there is, by default, there is nothing there. So if you open your configuration, there is nothing there. So I can remove it from here. So let's, let's remove it. So this is my default PPPoE configuration. Now I have enabled IPv6. What I need to do, once again, I need to go to my uh, DHCP client, say that I'm expecting prefix that will be called pool uh, v6, for example. And then I will 
do this. So this is my first step. And that means that I have DHCP client and I have received my prefix. So prefix is there, but what to do next? I need somehow to forward this prefix to my end devices. You know, this end devices, I will be forwarding this way. So I'm going to take the address from my pool, which is called pool v6. I'm leaving it empty. And then I will say interface, or I can, I think I can use like one. So it will use the, the IP address one as a gateway to my LAN network. And I put it to my LAN interface and advertise. So this one means that it will create the IP address for Mac, but uh, this will, I think, use uh, the first. So let's do it. Yeah, exactly. What happens is that it created now dynamically IP address from the pool that it received. And what it did, it starts to advertise it. It means that I'm as a laptop connected to my network, I have received IP address there. Here we can see it. So this is my network five, and this is my IP address, IPv6 address that was added, that was created um, inside my interface. And I can do now ping, okay, ping six, so this doesn't work. Let's open new monitor, new terminal. Just close that. Ping six facebook.com. And we see that it works. That my IPv6 network is up and running. How to set up blocking? There are two ways. The first way is that we can define Mikrotik group. And if customer is blocked, he is using different profile. So this is what I shown here when I was configuring my PPPoE session, my PPPoE server there, uh, I have profiles. Uh, sorry, this is, uh, this is the router. So I have PPP, PPP profiles. And what I can do is I can uh, use the default. And when customer is blocked, I'm saying, no, don't use default, but use IPv6 block and allocate IPv6 from this, uh, from this pool. Okay, so this, what I need to do, I'm going to my config of radius, search radius, and inside radius, I will with Mikrotik because I work with Mikrotik. And there, here, here we have it. You see there is a reject attribute which says Mikrotik group IPv6 block. So it means that it's going to use this profile. Does it work? We can try it. We can move customer to block status, but I will disconnect my laptop because I'm connected there. And, uh, but this is the way how it works. Uh, the second option is that we can just use plain delegated IPv6 prefix attribute. And it will, instead of assigning correct IP, so here I can set it there for block user. And I can define some some network that will be used, something like that. So it means that this is not used anymore and delegated IPv6 prefix is forwarded for blocked clients. And instead of correct IP, we are assigning this fake IP. And what I wanted to show as the last part is configuration of DHCP, which is even easier. So because here we have um, configured the PPPoE and we don't know, but it has IP, IPv6 DHCP server inside. So if I want to configure my DHCP authentication or IPoE authentication, what I can do there is inside IPv6 DHCP server, I'll just create a new server. I'll put it to interface either at four or any interface where I connect my CPU devices and I say use radius. Okay, and it works exactly the same way just uh, instead of PPPoE, there will be a Mac authentication or option 82 authentication and customer will receive uh, IPv6 address from Splinks the same way as it does here with uh, uh, with uh, PPPoE authentication. And what I need to have there, I need to enable this DHCP PPP sections inside, inside Splinks. So I think that's all. And if you have any questions, just stay in touch, keep me informed and I'll try to answer them. Thank you for your time.